Hello everyone, it's Thursday. Happy Thursday. Today is my favorite practice. As you know, I absolutely love this practice. It is the practice of the law of desire and intention. And today's the day that we get to set the trajectory for all the things that we want to achieve in our lives. Today I'm going to take you into the work zone. We have lots of different life zones and I want to take you into the work zone because most of us are employed and we hold different positions inside of organizations and one of the things I do when I'm working with organizations is to help align people with strategy. So I spend a fair amount of time talking with CEOs and executive leaders to confirm the direction of their business. And what I've learned as a result of that is that most organizations are very well aligned and know their, their business trajectory um, on a vertical level. That means that each of the division leaders of an organization usually is very, very effective at managing their division and achieving what they need to for their division itself. What I've also learned is that when I'm working with organizations, sometimes the, the division leaders have a different interpretation of what the trajectory for the overall business is. So that, that can be problematic because inside of organizations, if you have divisions that are trying to achieve their goals, they could be competing with another division. So for one division to achieve what needs to be achieved, another division cannot. And studies have been done, in fact, to, to demonstrate this point because it all comes down to what the, what is the trajectory and what are the expectations of the people that are charged with the responsibility to achieve the, the business goals and direction, okay? And uh, a number of years ago in Michigan, a business school conduct, conducted a survey and they, they sent out, two, uh, they sent out um, research teams to 269 of the top performing companies and each of these people met with the CEO and the president of the organization and asked them who their top performers were and they wrote down their names. Then they asked them what they expect of their top performers and they wrote down that as well. They took it a step further and they went to the top executives that were named in the survey and asked them what they thought uh, their, their expectations were. So in other words, you know, hey, I'm sitting down with you and I want to know what do you think your boss expects from you? And they, and they wrote down all that information. And basically what they found was there was a 20 to 70 percent differential. What does that mean? That means that in all of the 269 companies that were participating in this survey, there was never 100 percent agreement on the expectations. In the best companies, they agreed upon 80% of the expectations. And in the lowest performing companies, of the top companies, that is, they only agreed on 30% of the expectations. That's a huge differential, and that just screams to me that most people have a different interpretation of what is expected from them. And one of the tools that we can use to help align an organization, not only just vertically, so that everybody understands what's exactly expected of them. We also have to align organizations laterally so that each of the divisions are working together not only just to achieve their division goals, they need to be able to be working together to achieve the business goals. And the, so that this way, everybody's pointing in the same direction. Because what happens is, in most organizations, they have some type of, of performance management system in place. And in many organizations, that performance management system that is in place is really not tied to the trajectory of the business. And that's problematic. Most of it, most of the performance management programs that are in place are all about just, just the individual and their individual performance. And that creates a little bit of an issue because each person is really only then focusing on their tasks and activities and really don't have a clear understanding of how the that how the tasks and activities that are expected of them actually contribute to the success of the business. And if businesses want to achieve their goals, their business goals over a three to five year period of time in the most effective way, each person has to know what those goals are as it relates to their role in and of itself. So to me, this is all about desire and intention. Because as we sit down and we work with our senior leaders and we sit down and we talk to them about the trajectory of the business, leaders of the organization first and foremost have to have the same understanding of what that trajectory is well enough 
to be able to explain that to all of the people that are part of their team. And businesses often fall a little bit short of that because most people are very uncomfortable to have conversation with people that are underperforming. Uh, and as we just shared with, with regard to this survey that I told you about, most people think that they're doing a really good job. Most people go into work every day thinking, hey, you know what, I'm going to do the very best I can, and yet still wind up falling short of the expectations of their leader because those expectations and that trajectory has not been clearly set for each person inside the organization. And to me, that is critical, especially during the economic state that we're in now, so that we can work within budgets and achieve the goals of the business. So as an individual, part of our responsibility is to be a little bit more assertive in, um, in business by working with our leaders. Most of us take a passive role and, and have the expectation that our leader is going to share with us everything that we need to do. That's not generally what happens. Leaders are often very busy doing other things, and leaders will always tell you that the, their least favorite thing is to manage people, most cases, not all most cases. So the dialogue between employees and leaders does not really take place if, if it happens at all. And when it does take place, it's not usually about how somebody can do a little bit better and what the trajectory is for that particular person. Most, most leaders would prefer to not say anything and this is definitely true in most businesses. If, if somebody's not doing what they're expected to be doing by a leader, what happens is the leader doesn't necessarily have a conversation with that person. Instead, the leader will have a conversation with a whole bunch of other people. So everybody else in the organization is aware of how this person is not living up to the expectations of the leader, except for the person that actually needs to know, and that would be the employee themselves. And to me, this is so relevant and so important as it relates to our practice today of, of intention and desire, because as employees, we all have goals that we want to achieve for ourselves. Many of us have um, maybe promotions that we want to achieve. Maybe there are different divisions we, we might want to work in. We have a career path that we want to follow. And this is where we need to be assertive. We need to be sitting down with our leaders and sitting and saying to them, hey, you know, what is it that I can do better? The things that I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis, how does that actually contribute to the success of the business? Because what really happens is everybody's just waiting for direction and very few people are taking the initiative to have the dialogue and to monitor the process. And that's really what the practice of desire and intention is all about. It's about clear communication of what the trajectory is. If we all are pointing toward the same goal, when we experience the dynamics in business, we have more, uh, more opportunity and a better understanding of how to make decisions as they unfold that are more in alignment with what the direction of the business is and how the business needs to go. And when we are unfamiliar what, with what the trajectory of the business is, then some of the decisions that we make might just be, well, this is what our policy is. So we may have a short-term gain and a long-term loss. So I want you to be thinking about that today as we're practicing the, the, the law of desire and intention. I want you to be giving your attention today to what your career goals and objectives are, especially if you have aspirations of becoming a leader someday. If you're in the leadership role already, I want you today to practice this practice by sitting down and thinking about all the employees that are under your purview, all the people that you're responsible to work with and collaborate with to achieve the goals of your division. Do they really understand the direction of the business? Have you clearly communicated that to them? Are they getting feedback on a regular basis to help them perform better? Because as we do this, we're going to find that some of the activities and tasks that we have people doing are not necessarily contributing to the goals and direction of the business. They may have been important goals and activities at one point in time, and yet now they're not serving purpose because they're not helping us to achieve 
a change in business direction. So that's the practice I want you to be thinking about today. I hope that you have an absolutely outstanding day and we'll check in with you tomorrow.